Hello and welcome to all member chat from Create with Claire Rowley, my online school. Uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else, know that you can join by going to createwithclairerowley.com. And it's a free school and inside of the school, there's a lot of other people just like you that like to create and you can get to know one another and join one of the Zooms that I am recording this from right now. It is January 7th of 2023, and we've got uh, several people and another person I think just lost their, maybe she didn't want to be recorded. So wel <laughs> welcome everybody and the dog's going to bark because why not? <laughs> <laughs> this is a, <laughs> maybe that's my novel, maybe it just arrived. This is a, a casual zoom chat where uh, normally i have some idea of what i'm going to show you and uh, a lot of times i like you guys to come up with uh questions that you may have or do, are any of you working on a project right now we have amy and tina and sharon and another claire because i have my cell phone set up for real tight up close uh shots so that if you really can't see something just say it and i will make that camera really big so you can really see what it is that um, I'm showing. I just thought I might make one of these but not using inking, using instead maybe piece some fabrics together and make a quilted version. But um, that was just because I had no idea what to do. I'm always up for playing with the octa hoops, but we have a sewer in here who would probably prefer I sew something. So Hello, everybody. You can start talking again. And what would you like me to do? Anyone have any? Sharon, do you have any particular thing that you're working on on your on your uh, ballroom dancing outfits? And we do have a lot of square dance people that do square dancing outfits using the creative feet as well, which uh, it, you can make money selling garments to other people uh, as an option. Sharon is muted, just so you know. And uh, I can ask you to unmute yourself if you have been talking and thought. She's not responding to me. <laughs> All right, stop being so quiet. And now we're down to only three people in here. So uh -oh. who else did we lose, Lorinda? Yeah, we lost all but Amy and Tina and Sharon. That's only you three. Wow. And she was muted. So either they didn't want to be on or their systems, maybe all of their windows wanted to update too. So, well, I know, I know Wendy is like snowed in where she, cause she's, yeah, she's in where the blizzards are happening. So I had this, <coughs> this girl pop up on the, the new chat at creativefeet.com on the bottom, right? If you click chat, you type and I get a text. Now, trust me, you don't wake me up because I have my phone set to not alert me. My phone never vibrates like that because I'm constantly getting messages from too many different places so when it is the right time for me to see it i answer it but it's a really neat way to interact i don't have to open my email program so if you guys ever uh, although the the chat inside of the school is exactly the same if you click on my face you can say hello and then talk to me and i get a text so it may be 11 o'clock at night and you're trying to figure out how to do a rolled i don't know a satin stitch edge <laughs> what do you guys want me to do I'm going to take over. Stop asking you for help. Go <laughs> um, on. Yes, Amy. Well, so I, I've seen you do sequins, okay. but I've never had any sequins, but I have some now. Is that because you won them? Yes. Oh, you ordered your Christmas present. They were, yes. Did I do okay? Is there anything you did that fabulous. I did? Okay, good. I was so stressed. Fabulous. I don't what is this? I should have probably that's asked. A two, you that's the tube you. oiler. Oh, okay. And it's so that you can oil into your machine. And yeah. Because one of the things we're gonna cover in the extensive is I'm gonna pick a machine apart and kind of help you guys know how to clean it and where where you should and shouldn't oil because uh, they, they basically lie to you when they say your sewing machine is self-oiling. There's no such thing. So well, yeah, I you guys need to learn that. And my mechanic experience, you know, I can, I'll, I'll give you that as well. That information. 
I'm trying to burn a little time to let these. So, so I have some sequins now and. Um, Would you like me to do a little sequins and ribbon foot? I'd be happy to do a little. Yeah. I, barely, I barely ever show it and I need to film it. There you go. See, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to put them on yet, but I have a couple of ideas. Um, I just need some uh, inspiration, I guess. Okay. Who just showed up? Florinda. Oh, I had a power uh, outage for a moment. I oh, wow. I figured you guys lost power or something, that you wouldn't just leave so rudely. No. <laughs> No. This is a shirt. <laughs> that was an evil laugh though, wasn't it? <laughs> this is a t-shirt transformation thing that I did on the It's So Easy show. And uh, one of the things I did on that is add rhinestones and satin stitching and totally change the neckline. And I was going to put some sequins on it, but it's not done being stitched yet. So I'll probably film that as a separate thing, as a continuation, and link it from the It's So Easy show. Because I get people asking questions about it. And I only brought it up because I just found it sitting here. Uh-oh. All right. What yep. should I put sequins on? Never to be seen again. That's right. The sequins and ribbon foot says flat things. So anything that is thin and is flat and now we got all of you back again and i don't know i don't know if the if everyone else in the school is even getting the emails i feel like i'm not reaching everyone seems to or me maybe it was just too short a notice for some people I don't know, three thousand three thousand members you know it just feels like there would be more people getting yeah. an invitation how many of those 3,000 are actually active in the school? That's the thing. And I think it's just that they don't know how to use the school, for one. Yeah. And, and they they don't have it default to have the notification on. Right. That'll or be. they don't they don't know how to set up Zoom or Yeah, or they or they're like, who is Claire? <laughs> well, so here's the thing, one thing that changed with the mighty networks is now the email it doesn't say your host claire rowley or your whatever it says home oh my god I and so to, i must need the, to name it then the first time i got it i was like home who's the i almost deleted it oh, and then i saw the subject line so why could they why couldn't they have waited until a slow time of year and and had a little in tu tutorial. Let us do that tutorial first before. You know, I didn't even notice that, that it says home. Gosh. Really? Yeah. That threw me the first time too. It, and then I saw whatever the thing was and, and I figured it out, but. Yeah. It put me in the home group too. And I'm like, home, home. And I, I couldn't figure. See, it's good to do these chats. Details. Space name. Jeez, Good so, now, so now I know my, my school is now considered a space. Mm -hmm. That's weird. And I, don't, I really don't know all the groups you have. So you have the VIP group. Is that for the people that bought merchandise? And then you know oh, what they it's a it's a monthly membership and you get free pattern or I develop a pattern a month. You're going to get this pattern this month and it will be refined. Because yeah. if you look at this, it's like some of them are you can see it's not it's not very really good Can't as far as it. shaping so you're gonna get that and another vip session which stabilizer did you use on those see that's the thing i could show you that today but i'm gonna film a good tutorial on it as well oh, okay. oh my gosh okay Keep talking, you guys. I'm so glad I'm changing the name right now. <laughs> <clears throat> My computer's got to go to the doctor. Uh oh. It did the same thing as it did last time we were doing this, and it just it goes into this crazy thing, and then it 
I don't know. So it's going, it's got to go <laughs> in. Yikes. What is yeah. it? I shouldn't even say that I know how to do that stuff. <laughs> I, I, I'm limited on my time, but I've helped a lot of people, several people in here, right? <laughs> yeah. It, but I think it's got some kind of a bug or something because I don't know. It just is not acting like it's supposed to. Then <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could help everyone with everything. I know. My, my issue is usually when people go take their computer and their first inclination is to clean it all out. So before you do anything, make sure you get all your photos up in the cloud and anything that you love out of your computer because they're probably going to try to do the fastest possible fix, which is just to clear out your whole computer and restart it and you, you lose everything. Yeah. Oh. So they, they reset it to factory. Yeah. yeah. Do, 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 boom. Okay, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> There's 150 bucks for you. And yeah, now you've, right. you've lost everything that you love. You know. So um, Google, if you Google um, photos, you can have all your photos stored there, and you never lose them. And then it's free up until you reach a huge amount. Because I haven't filled mine up yet, and and if anyone's gonna fill it up, it's gonna be me with videos and stuff. And then Amazon Prime, if you're an Amazon Prime man, or you, you have the upload photos in the oh. cloud to them. I would, yep. just, I would just choose one, stick with one so you don't forget what you've done. Where something is, yeah. Do you guys forget things? Oh. <laughs> yes. External <laughs> hard drive. All right, I have some sequins. I've got different size sequins. I've got some lace. I've got some brick rack. And my coffee's getting cold. <laughs> and I can do a little elastic as well. Why not? What is Rick Rack used for these days? It used to be just a decorative decorative thing on dresses and stuff back back in the day. <laughs> it's not gonna say home anymore. It's gonna say create with Claire Rowley main space. Okay. Okay. I'm all up to learn this term space. So thank you for letting me know. If anything else ever comes in weird to you, I gotta, I'm gonna. It'll. It's a reason for me to send out another notification to everybody. So I'll do that later. Whenever there's anything that goes wrong, I always give you more. Okay, then I'll just extend this sale for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, you know. So I do not mind being told that not when something isn't right. I, I, I thank you so much when you guys show me. I'm trying to find my way back to the Zoom. Where is it? I hear you, Amy. I would be there to show you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, um, so there's this, there's this, there's this little place and, and they have, uh, for a certain amount of money, you can, I can rent a little space and the space is the size of this, maybe smaller than where I'm working right now. And to imagine putting my business into that space is, is nearly impossible to envision. But if I take all of the equipment and it goes to another place where all my ugly part of my business goes, and then I just have one little space where it's cute, it actually would be able to, you guys could, in the area could come in and shop in this little, it'd be a little mini store. Then inside the same building, there's a conference room and there's this cafe. And in the cafe, there's the staging area where I could teach at the front and there's tables and all the, all the tables is there. There's lighting, there's phone booths that, they're, they're, uh, that they have in there that I can actually do voiceover in. And, uh, and these are like shared spaces that I rent in addition for a smaller amount of money and I don't have to pay for them unless I'm using them. And it's just this really cool environment. So I'm leaning toward doing something like that and also doing major events up at the Prescott Resort where you guys can come with your machines for two and a half days of class. And uh, so all this notification of me needing to move did was jump me into that frame of mind again. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually excited about it. I'm wondering how I'm going to get it all done. 
You'll manage. I'm not really. You guys do that. I let, yeah, you, I let you wonder how I get everything done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she does it. Okay, sorry. I'm well, now. They know to... that you never sleep, so you know. True. <laughs> does feel like that. We do know that. It looks. Oh, it's because the lights are shining. No wonder I was I had a glare on my face. Light was shining on me. No wonder I couldn't see. <laughs> All right. So this, I'm probably not going to be able to use this tripod. Where's my other one? <laughs> you know, every time I look for anything, I hear Amy go, I know where it is. Or, <laughs> over there, I could hand it to you. Even when you're not live yes. with me, Amy. If I, was, if I was there, I could see it. Because oh, right now, I don't know where it is, but if I were there, I would see it. Yeah, I have so I can tell you where it was. I was doing reorganization. Ah. So uh, I put it somewhere. Oh, it's right where it normally is. Oh, well, this is. <laughs> <laughs> sequence in the Imagine paper. that. You put it away. Yeah, it just looks like another leg on this table, but it's actually the tripod. So. Ah. I am a little disheveled. So That's what, okay. better, what better way to get yourself back on track than to go live? <laughs> <laughs> so Rick Rack can be used for hemming. And uh, it's a really fun thing. So I, I mean, this foot does so many different things. You can also hem with yarn to create really, really <laughs> soft satin stitch looking edges. I have this cough. <coughs> this little tickle. Probably your batting. <laughs> I've seen um, I've seen Rick Rack used like um, in still I mean it's still decorative I suppose but like in bookmarks and yeah I mean um, I'll just start with that because we're talking about it yeah and then I'll pull out elastic and do all the other things right now I have a brown thread it's not very attractive. See, this has Rick Rack on it. What is that, Amy? Only a spotlighter. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I mean, you're looking at it upside right. down. Don't wave it around. Sorry. So that's just a oh. bookmark. And, okay, yeah, but yeah. it's not stitched down. Did you make that? Oh, I guess it's not. No, it has a button. Too close. Pull it back a little bit. Pull it oh. closer to you. There you go. Yeah. The camera's going. Oh. See that close? Yeah, sorry. Um, I didn't make it. A friend of mine made it. Um, but I just remembered it had Rick Rack in it. So it doesn't hmm. count. It's not sewn. It's not sewn. You're right. <laughs> sorry. I have seen it sewn um, on, uh, you know, book covers and bookmarks, and I've seen it sewn on lots of things. By the way, I remember my mom using it when she'd sew clothes. She'd use rip, rip rack, like if the seam was like across the chest or something, you know, or if there was a ruffle at the bottom, she'd have rip rack at the seam. So how do you get the rip rack in there? Okay. Probably with the thread, like you do everything else. <laughs> Or do you use the bigger one? There's three different size guides for this one. Oh, I'd use that one probably. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of Like you guys can see me. Yeah, that one. <laughs> In reality, don't we want the smaller one to do that with? Who just said that? Lorinda. Now your mic is kind of muffled. Oh, sorry, I moved it away from me. Is that better? There you go. I yeah, just are we supposed to use the small one at the width rep. of it? I just wanted you to represent yourself as <laughs> you want. So there we have the four different openings. And it's the middle one. So I love it when you guys, you know, analyze it because you'll learn it better, especially if you analyze it wrong, you know. Uh -oh. So, uh, and I know how much you enjoy saying something and then me going, nope. So. 
Well, hey. But hey, even if you do it in your head, you know, if you're too, if you don't want everyone to witness that you didn't say it right, but if you do, you know, it helps. So this yeah. analyzing um, helps you understand the science better of why I designed these things the way I did. And why every copy of this foot that's been come that's come out has not worked because they didn't they don't have the science behind it. So if I try to put this into this guide, it it doesn't go because it's so much wider. It's three eighths of an inch wide, but really it's only quarter inch wide. So yes, Lorenda. So if you were gonna straighten that out, how big is it? Quarter inch. This size. It would feed through perfectly straight through the three eighths inch guide and and have no trouble at all just feeding right through but we don't want that we want it to struggle we want it to <laughs> <laughs> i was right you were <laughs> i'd be worried there <laughs> yeah I already told you you were right, but apparently I didn't say it well enough. And that explains why you didn't go. Oh, cool. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I went close Good job, Miranda. Well, I'm usually wrong all the time, but you know. <laughs> when Clotilda and I met, and she saw the feet for the first time, I only had one size guide for this foot. And uh, she goes, how about Rick Rack? And I that's what made me come up with the accessory guides was Clotilda going, what about this? What about that? What about this? She was so annoying. I love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> when I came out with, when I figured it out, I only had this foot or this guide. If I had already had the other two guides, I probably never would have done it right to begin with. So if you analyzed it the way you did, you know, I would have as well. Having not had any idea I was going to make the other two guides. I didn't know. So what's going to happen now is once it gets past that size, it will then have to slither through. It zigzags itself through the guide. Oh. Oh. So, and we want the stitching to fall on. The <coughs> what am I going to sew it on? <laughs> <laughs> so I could not. So Time to go the stitching is going to go across it or straight down it? I can do whatever you want. Well, no, I was asking what it was going to do. Oh, oh, as far as what the stitching is going to do. So yeah, can, yes. I would recommend normally a double needle. Would you guys like me to do what I should do instead of what I usually do when I'm what do you think? I'm, I'm still on my yellow and orange. <sighs> that looks good with the big huh? Yeah. I could care less if you, with your sewing on. No, you, you do care. You're always telling me what to do. Eyes <laughs> <laughs> watering too. What's going on? Jason and I both have a watery eye with me. Came up to me like can you clean my face tinker i used to lick my face all day long <laughs> Aww. another hug come on all right just i'll come to you okay is that better is that better because there's something outside for you aren't you gonna go get it <laughs> what do you want he's not leaving what do you want babe he wants his mommy. I feel like he wants me to go look at something. Um, <laughs> now I'm curious. <laughs> I'm going to use a double needle. Why not? Because this is about teaching. You guys are special. So how many? Is that the short bus kind of special? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you guys showed up. Alive I, I knew somebody was going to say that. <laughs> I kept waiting on you, Amy. Well, I was trying to behave myself. What can I say? Who are started? you and what have you done with Amy? Right? Yeah. 
So Sharon, if you're wondering what, this is how they act all the time. So they're the uh, sar sarcastic, so sarcastic sisters. And I actually have created an image that we're going to put on a shirt for anybody who identifies as a sarcastic sewer. And uh, so they can't help themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Needles, different size double needles. You guys know a lot about that. I do have one video where I did a lot on the double needle for the sequins and ribbon foot. I don't know if it was live. I, I remember doing an image for it. So it was live and it was really good. It was a really good show. Thank you. The rest weren't, huh? <laughs> I didn't say that. I can be sarcastic <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my the learning. Arlene taught me how. Yeah. I think we've created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to find a piece of paper that's not going to ruin the needle, but uh, oh well. So oh when well. you when you look at when you look at a needle, I'm poking a hole. One. So when you see the size of the double needles and they say 2.0, 2.5, 1.5, this measurement has to do with halfway into the hole of each one of these holes. So you would go cut that hole in half and that's how big the, the or how far apart the stitching will be. Not the outside of the hole, but the middle of the, of the holes. So if you choose a double needle and the outside of the needle is extending past the trim, then your needle is going to fall off and you're not going to get a good result. This is the one that is best for this size rickrack and you can use all sizes of rickrack because we've got all those different size guides and you can use a double needle or not. So I'm using the 3.090 universal double needle, which has, uh, this is its package. Okay. And that means I need two threads, which is why I have the thread dispenser. The thread dispenser has two, two locations for cones of thread. You can also use it for ribbons, for satin ribbons, same thing. Anything that's flat. So let's see, I'll go with a another purplish color and now I'll just use the color that's on the other side of the cone. I don't know if you can still see me in the little screen. Yep. So when you thread with a double needle, you thread both threads the same all the way through till just above the eye of the needle. And I should have removed one of the threads that was already in the machine, but I know how to do it by holding on to the thread so it can't move. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Yeah. Just always hold, thread both threads through all the way to this point. And then have one thread go behind the guide and one stay outside of it. And that's the separating area. That's where you separate the two threads. What's the separating area? Uh, did I also give you one of those needle threaders, Amy, for your... And if you guys are wondering what we're talking yeah. about, she had me do an advent calendar gift wrap thing. She bought a, she bought 20 or it was 25 presents. Yep. That made me pick them <laughs> in a lovely I was so stressed. Oh. What? I was, I was stressed out. And, uh, and then I wrapped each one individually and I only have one kind of wrapping. So did you like my little notes I wrote all over all year? I love your little notes. I saved some of them. Aw. Because they were so sweet. <laughs> I was like, if I don't have different wrapping paper, I'm going to write things on them. I'm going to draw on her wrapping paper. My friend Terry goes out to dinner with me and she's always like, here's my to-go container. And she gives me a pen and I draw all over it. <laughs> so nobody else eats her food but I think she just really likes to see what I draw each time 
gives me something to do while they bring the check. There you go. All right, so we have the ability now, and your question was, was uh, how are we going to stitch on it? And I was thinking fabric. Because you can stitch this straight. You can go around in circles. You can also use this as a hem. And you can use it to join two fabrics together to create a really neat join. So there's so many things I can do. And not all the time in the world, even though it's Saturday. <laughs> so what you're gonna what you're probably noticing, Sharon, is that I tend to ramble and this this could go hours if, if you guys let me. But uh, so and we usually do. Yeah. It's true. So Sharon, what um I, I I don't know a lot about ballroom dancing outfits. She, um she's got some some lycra, some really sheer fabrics, fabrics that flow, fabrics that stick, like that hug the body, right? Sharon, you're on mute. Well, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Shamoose. Chiffons, the lycra, four-way stretch. And you have the liquid base glue because that helps you so much with those. No, I have never used that. Okay. You got to get the liquid based glue. It's so it's water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. Yep. And you will be in love. And yep. it is. It, it's nothing like any kind of basting glue you find anywhere else. Oh, it's a wow. whole different uh, thing. You can also like draw with it on the fabric. I ruined my little nozzle. And I slide my finger over it. You can see how it's just, it's shimmering. It's still wet and it's just water soluble stabilizer that's wet. By sliding your finger over it, you take away some of the water. So it'll dry faster. And you could just put that on silk charmeuse or something really slinky and let it dry and then cut along that edge and you could do satin stitching right along the edge over that because it's water soluble stabilizer. It stops the fabric from stretching. No. And then it washes out whenever you wash it out. And if you don't wash it out, it just sits in there. So uh, I have my rickrack in a weird place here. Wrapped around a bunch of stuff. We'll leave that aside. And I hate to waste this fabric. I love it. And it's pretty. It is. I this is why I can't wait to start the Creative Feed Extensive because I'm gonna get into all different fabric types and show you guys how to handle them. And I know now that you guys want me to have a kit. So I'm trying to do that, but I don't know if I'll be able to organize that before the course starts. You always want to make sure you're using a center needle position on a double needle. It's my left. If I come down on the left, I'll hit the throat plate with the left needle. So center needle position, and then you bring your needles down. And if they're not centered, then you turn the nut to move the trim to the needles. And the fact that both threads are not going through that same thread guide keeps them separated right where they need to be separated instead of having uh, the risk of having both threads all of a sudden come together and go through one eye. If you've ever used a double needle and had that happen, it's bizarre. I, my, my scientific brain can't figure out how that happens. <laughs> so I'm going to a 3.0 stitch length and you can see that I'm able to spin. Or turn the fabric and the, and the rig rag goes with it. If you use invisible thread then you don't see the stitching at all and I need to go further this way. There, better lighting. So curving you can you can dramatically curve too. The sequins and ribbon foot is the less the less likely to stretch your fabrics out of shape of all three of the creative feet because of its unique bottom on it. So that's one thing that you can do with rickrack. I could go all day, so I'm not going to have to watch myself. 
So I'm going to show you an element of using it in between two fabrics to create a really cool join. I'm just going to use one. Uh, how boring. I'm not going to be boring. <laughs> What's really neat about this is no matter how much it's washed or worn, this stays flat. It does not lift up on the on the corners. And I can say that after 35 years almost. Wow. Yeah, August is 35 years. I'm like, oh, this, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, my company started first. I had this discussion with my daughter. She goes, Mom, I absolutely have no idea how old I am, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was six months pregnant when I launched the company in August. So she's six months younger than my company, which means when I said 34, I was right. She's about, <laughs> to, turn, she's about to turn 34. So I, we, I start questioning how old my company is because she goes, no, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. Sorry, dear. You're almost 34. Okay, so I usually do this one with a single needle. Yes, I do. And I may have to. Whoops. I have to think it through for a minute. cool is I have my microphone still hanging up and you guys are able to hear me well, right? Great. Yeah. So cool. If you're joining two pieces of fabric, then wouldn't the double needle make sense? No, I don't know. What's really cool about the stuff I do is it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you go, oh my gosh. That's why it shows people who are always like, oh my gosh, and hitting one another and stuff. Did you see her do that? How did she do that? So I'm sewing this right now on the right side of the fabric. Two, a double needle shares one bobbin and overcasts the raw edge of the fabric just by using a stitch on the edge, just so you know. The strongest of all stitches is a straight stitch with a double needle. So it'll stretch, outstretch anything, including the overlock machine, you know, the cover stitch. Okay. So if anytime you want to have a, a look of a straight stitch on top, and you want it to finish the edge of the fabric, skips, skipping the process of having to overcast. See, it kind of does that. Oh, wow. And now we go and introduce this fabric. Which part of me hates this and another part of me goes, ooh, I love that. <laughs> Do you guys love or hate this fabric? Love. I like it. Kind of both. Looks like a batik. It's a batik. Yeah, or one of the fake batiks. Okay. Artistic. I mean, it's still Claire Rowley, you know. Now <laughs> you go like this. Go boink. Whoa. And in this case, you would switch to the satin edge foot. I really should. Since I'm trying to teach at the same time. And if you don't know about my wooden pressers, this is when one of the times when you'd want to use this over an iron because an iron will melt that brick rack. So this allows you to press it, make it nice and flat. And you want it to stay in position. Right? So what are right. we gonna do? How do we how do we make sure that this is gonna stay right on the edge of that? How? Look at it. Sorry, I'm starting to sing. <laughs> as long as it's not the chicken dance that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> and that is, uh, Sharon, something that 
So you could you could use that uh, water soluble, like to put on motifs on things, right? Anything. Because yep. it would it would like glue it on there, and then you could stitch it. Yes, and it holds it in place while you sew it. Oh, nice. So, and instead of pinning, because pins do not really they're not your friend. They ruin fabric because they're not. Bald. Right. Well, that's that's what happened to me. I had all these lace motifs pinned on this big long ball gown, and by you know on and off the mannequin, I've got picks all over it from yeah. using pins. I know it's so awful, isn't it? But do you, you, so you sell that? Yes. If only yeah. there was a person that could teach you all those things to save you from all of that heartbreak. <laughs> yeah, and it was the hours I spent on that, let me tell oh, you. So I'm so sorry you went through that. There's okay. that sarcasm. She is learning, girls. <laughs> I'm trying to change, no, it's not the needle, it's the foot. Yes, you can use a double needle with a satin edge foot. This is your best friend right here, Sharon. This is the foot that's going to make all your top stitches, edge stitches, pin tucks, putting ribbon on top of fabric, uh, sewing around collars, sewing down the the uh, plackets of your whatever, you know. I mean, there's so many different ways you can make ballroom. So, and you could make a whole tuxedo, you know, with this foot. Lots of technical sewers in uh, tailoring use this. So anytime you want to have a perfect stitch a distance away from anything, this is the foot for that. And with or without a double needle, as you're witnessing. So I'm moving this over. Because we don't want to move the needles. We lost somebody. We lost Wendy again. Oh, this is a poor really Wendy. Awful time. What an awful time for her to have to fall off. She's going to go, no, I want to see her sew it. <laughs> see? I can procrastinate without driving you guys crazy. Between her computer problems and the the amount of snow and the weather that she's having. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing we're recording. Yeah. So I'm. This is good because I'm remembering what I need to teach. And I'm going to probably use the cell phones, this record, if, nah, I don't know. It doesn't look like it's doing good. I just need to do this all over again. So the <laughs> guide, the guide on the satin edge foot has a wire. And I designed this foot for a blind lady so that she could do the serger stitch without being able to see. And uh, so here. Here's the same foot that's on the machine. The little metal pin is connected to the white guide. Most common mistake people make is they turn the nut and move this wire onto this edge of the foot, and that makes the foot not work. So it has to stay within the tunnel beneath the foot, within that little U-shaped channel. Let's see here. If you get that wire on top of either one of these ledges, it'll start hitting your feed dogs and make all kinds of noise and sew like it's drunk. <laughs> but this little guide pin right here is always what you position off the edge. And then it has like this wall. The fabric becomes a wall. I should be wearing socks. I have to take my shoe off and my right foot's getting cold. <laughs> Another quirk, you guys know about me. Okay, so if I were to have not changed the position of the satin edge guide, then my temptation would have been to move the needle over. But what happens on a double needle when you move the needle over? It hits the plate. Correct. So now I don't really have to even try to sew straight because I'm using the folded edge of that fabric to guide without having to think about this fabric or that fabric, just keeping that edge against that because they are glued together. There's no risk of shifting. And I can't see what I'm doing. I'm looking through the cell phone, which makes me nauseous. Makes me a little dizzy. Sorry, I gotta undizzy myself. Whew. <laughs> I can't watch 
3D movies either. My brain has issues with that. Now on a top stitch, a shorter stitch length is more desirable and you can also use the Invisifil thread instead. What I have on right now is polyester 40 weight, so you're seeing the stitch a lot more. But isn't that a nice little join? Mm -hmm. Saying Rick Rack. And so easy with the glue combined on there, and I don't have it all glued. So, so if you remember the steps, you sew it to the right side, and then you flip it over, press and save your fingers from pressing by using the presser. I used to have my fingerprint, actually, my fingerprint was worn off from finger pressing. That shows, which is not good. Anytime you injure your body over and over and over again, you're at risk of getting a disease, a serious disease right in that spot. So now once again, I'm gonna glue right along the edge of this fabric. I really got to replace the nozzle on this. And set it down. Wait for it to dry or not. Yeah. Actually, you should. I don't because you're watching live and I don't want to make you wait. You can also speed up the drying time by ironing, but not this case. Why? But that's only because you're using a rick rack that would melt. A lot of rick rack wouldn't. That's right. That's why I asked why to see if you were paying attention. Oh, <laughs> I didn't hear you ask why. I was busy pumpkin. <laughs> you passed the test. <laughs> Every time I do something like this, I'm like, okay, what do I make this out of or make this into? Because now I have this. Poor Wendy, she didn't pop in soon enough. Oh well. And I just think this is really cool. You could actually do that on quilts as well. All right, so that's that's Rick Rec. We can utilize any flat trim, including all laces and even yarn. So what does that look like when the Rick, okay, put the Rick Rack flat. So what a cute little pillowcase. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. Aren't you glad you actually came up with something for me to do? Something new, something different. Hmm. So you could use this to make a pillowcase using my, my tech. I have another technique. <laughs> oh, there's just too many. You have a lot of techniques. Yes. That is what I am. I'm the technique maker. I'm the inventor. So I invent things and techniques. And this is uh, one of the favorite things that I did at shows. People would pass it around and go, look at it. So, but I didn't even, I didn't even use a double needle then. This is Fully machine washable. You don't ever have to worry about it falling apart. Everything is nice and neat and tidy on the back side, even though the fabrics were raw. Wow. So now if I wanted to use this foot to hem a t-shirt or, you know, you, sometimes your garments are stretchy, right, in that ballroom. Mm -hmm. Come on, show me a stretch fabric really fast. Come on, brain. Oh, I can do this. Nice. There's one there somewhere. I have everything stacked really nice and I don't want it to fall. So nothing worse than Minky, right? Oh, I'm pretty sure she does not dance in Minky. Right. Pepper, <laughs> I don't have. It's Saturday. I'm trying not to spend my entire Saturday selling for you guys, but fair enough. Not that I don't want to. <laughs> now I have to focus on other things. So, all right. So we have a really stretchy fabric. So how do you hem that? And this would be the same for a t-shirt or a leotard. 
Um, any anytime you want to get stretch fabric to behave itself, just take the glue. Now you see why everyone will tell you you need the glue. There's no way you don't need it. It's like, and that's remember, it's really not glue. It's water soluble stabilizer that's wet. Yep. And then once again, kind of slide your finger. Don't push it into the fibers. Keep it on the fibers. Rip it up. And one of the most amazing things about the satin edge foot is that it feels the edge of the fabric through the fabric. So instead of sewing this hem on the wrong side, sew on the right side. Oh, she got her on the Oh, it's somebody else. Unless it's her on a different device. Because mm. she's on an iPad now, so. Yeah. So if it's windy and you're on an iPad and you don't have the ability to talk, you can use the chat feature and say, yeah, this is windy. Perfect. So we've moved on. If it is windy, this is how it ended up looking. I know that this is recorded, so you'll be able to see it. Even if it's not windy, that's still what it looks like. Yeah, but it's a lot. <laughs> now what I've done is I've folded up a stretch fabric, this being minky. This is the raw edge right here. I rolled it over and glued it with the liquid based. And now I can place the satin edge foot on top of the right side of the fabric. And this would definitely be a time when I'd say, make sure you wait for it to dry. And I'm not because I'm live. So it's you the way go ahead, Amy. You have the guide right at the edge of where the fold is at the I mean where the, the wire, edge of the, the wire, is on the bottom. The wire and the guide are falling off the edge. Okay. It feels it. I mean yeah. it has it has no senses. It is so what did you make with that fabric? It isn't in it. I haven't done anything. Oh, okay. it's cute. I was going to make something for Tinkerbell. Aww. Which was my dog that passed away in December. Well, you could make something for Chase. Yeah, I still have it. He's laying on a big chunk of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Tinkerbell used to lay on. So this is really fluffy and I'm having to uh, raise and lower it. But remember, I didn't wait for that to dry either. And so it's a little moist and maybe that's sticking to the bed of the machine a little bit. I don't think so though. I think it's just, I'm trying to sew through the phone and I can't see and I'm, wild, I'm nauseous again. I get all, oh. I thought I could get you guys set up to sew through your cell phone so you could see better. After I tried it a few times, I was like, I don't think, if I can't do it, maybe other people can't either. But, um, but something that you would make a, a garment out of isn't going to be a, that thick, right? Probably much easier. And you see how there's no pucker at all because the glue is a stabilizer. So it locks the bias, takes the stretch, is the stretch part of the fabric and it locked it and then on the back which you can't see because it's minky is that same overcast like this you can't see that because it's too furry but it's there mm -hmm. so that is completely secured <clears throat> and it's two rows of stitching on the top and sorry I didn't use something thinner so you can see but so t-shirt hemming, that's done with the satin edge foot. Can you see those two rows of stitches? Were you just using a regular straight stitch? Yes, always. Or... Is that a double needle? Yeah, that's, I like the way it looks on the back. See the tracks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is too fluffy. 
It's the same exact thing. I, I haven't done anything to change it. It's the same as this. It's that two rows of stitching. And then that on the back. So, so if you were sewing like a Lycra or something, uh, I have a fine. I'll find some other fabric. All right. No, no. A friend of mine asked me to make her some leggings and I'm like, I don't know if I can sew with that stuff, but yes, yes, this is exactly it. And you'd use the stretch double needle. Okay. It's more than one type. So this, the one I'm using right now is universal. I didn't skip a stitch, but you could end up skipping stitches. Okay. So on these needles, see how big this one is? You, you have to have a machine capable of going at least seven millimeters wide to use that stitch or to use this needle because it's so far apart. Say you have a machine and you don't have a needle position and you need one and your machine just won't go there. You can cut off one of the needles on a double needle. And then that gives you a whole nother set of needle positions. Hmm. For every size double needle there is, the spacing varies. If you broke off a left needle on one, on all six different sizes, that's by two. Uh, oh, see, now I want to call her up and help her with her computer. <laughs> so see how this one says stretch? And that applies as well on double needles. The stretch double needle is the one I would recommend for... I don't seem to have in my little stash here. But we do that entire box of needles and you don't have a stretch double needle. I'm shocked. I do. I just don't have one in here. <laughs> I have access to all that I sell. Yes. All right. So what else? Let's see. We wanted to, ooh, I'm going to see how excited I get. You'd think I wouldn't get excited <laughs> after 35 years of this or 34. There I go, aging my daughter too early. <laughs> All right. What was I going to do? I was excited. What did I say before? So I can remember. You just said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you, you didn't give us any clues. You <laughs> um, okay. I got, the double, I, got, I got the double needle on. There's a, while I have the double needle on, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the pearls and piping foot, and pearls and piping has this little washer that slides left and right on the foot, and that changes the position of the tunnel and moves it over like that, either there or there. It's a ten thousandths of an inch difference between positions. And that doubles your needle position capability on your machine without moving the needle. Okay. And on, a double, and on a double needle, we need to not move the needle. I haven't, right. shown, I haven't shown any of you double needle on pearls and piping since I've been doing my show. Pretty sure. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't either. And this is why there's a creative feed extensive because it's just too much. You can, you can sew beads on the edge of your really sheer fabric. This is really old. This is my daughter's first communion veil that I made her. And this is wire edge satin stitching done with the satin, satin edge foot so that I could create a more flowing ruffly look. And I am the inventor of the wire edge and the fishing line edge, by the way. <laughs> so that's how old I am. And then this is because she's at, she's going to be working a lot in sheer fabrics. So this is the uh, yarn as a hem, and that's stitched on with the sequins and ribbon foot using the eighth inch accessory guide little hole. You put the small yarn through there and then you just stitch it with invisible thread or better than that on wedding veil I recommend the, la the lingerie thread that you find in, under threads at Creative Feet and they're the nylon threads. And what you see here is this octi hoops. I stitched right on the, the veil without any stabilizer behind it. And you can do that on all of the fabrics you have for your ballroom dancing outfits. 
Are you getting excited, Sharon? Yeah, I just now I want to know more and more and more. <laughs> she is addictive, you know. That's pretty much how it works. Yeah. The more you learn, the more you want to learn. Mm -hmm. I love learning it. And this is just an example of this is the satin edge foot. Does that look does that look like a satin stitch? She's gotta stop losing her connection right when I'm showing something. <laughs> Hi, Lindy. Know that you're not on mic and we are feeling for you. We're, we hope that you stay connected. I'm asking you to unmute in case you have the ability. So see how neat that is. Would you ever think that that was a regular sewing machine? Mm -mm. And this is, hi, Lindy. Hi, I swear now I'm on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> My iPad isn't charged, and so I, I did get on it, and then all of a sudden it went dead again. So now I'm on my iPhone. Well, it's going to be recorded, so afterward you can watch again. Okay. I don't know if you have third to times a charm. I feel like each time you fall off, it's right when I'm about to stitch it. Has that been happening? Uh huh. <laughs> That's all right. Would, I'll rewatch. That, that would drive me nuts. Uh, oh, look, look at I have some really sheer fabric. Would this please you? Oh, yeah. There I go again. I got to remember why I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so here's a, a chiffon-ish type of silky see-through fabric. Kind of a crepe de chine. Acid mm -hmm. wash. This is like a, a mishmash of all the most annoying things to sew on. <laughs> and it's easy. All right. What was I gonna do? See, I've been missing the regular sewing. I've been just doing quilting, lots of quilting, but, it's, but it, all of it's fun. Okay, Claire, what are you looking for? Oh yeah. So you have been working on your quilt? No, my quilt comes last. Uh, you guys come first. <laughs> thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I wanted to. Every time I want to work on my quilt, I go, if you're going in there, you may as well be teaching something or filming something. So they're different sizes, see that? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can tell how much smaller the black one is than the white. Yeah. Yep. And by the way, using, <laughs> oh, see, this is why there's a creative feed extensive. Claire, you can't show them everything. All right, I'll tr try not to. Okay, you guys, did you catch that? She said something to herself and then she answered herself. Right. <laughs> as long as she didn't disagree with herself. Well, okay, you're right. We'll go with that. I don't know, I'm arguing with myself. <laughs> you just can't hear it. Well, have you seen the t-shirt that says something like, uh, if you see me talking to myself, don't interrupt. I'm self-employed and I'm having an employee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't know if you can see the glue but the glue is there It'd be hard to use it this way for this fabric because it's so shiny but the dry glue is is there so that is water soluble stabilizer blocking the fabric and you can't really tell i mean you you, you know it's there because i'm saying it's there but can you see the, the little snaky shape that i did so you can cut it right along the edge of that and then you can put beads rhinestone chain cord anything you want right there so just to give you this is what the creative feed extensive is all about that will be happening this month i will let you know as soon as i have my head on straight enough to officially announce it the uh, table of contents on the course is, is extense you know this is some of the things you can sew with the pearls and piping foot. Large beads, small beads, single bead, double beads, triple, um, seed beads, hand strung beads, rhinestones, clasp rhinestones, and even the bigger ones, all with the same foot. Straight on the edge, on top, swirled around or not. Mm -hmm. And every other copy, every other beading foot on the market is a copy of mine. 
and they cannot do what we can do. They try. All right, player, come on. Sequence? You were going to do sequence? Well, eventually. <laughs> oh, okay. Just because it was the first thing you asked for, it doesn't mean you're going to. That's fair. All right, I'm going to. I'm just going to do this on this because I haven't. So why not? Let's let's do something I've never done. Oh, I can't. Stop. I don't think there is something you've never done. I was just going to say I think I've done this, but <laughs> just not this particular fabric. I'm just trying to find a spot. Keep in mind that your fabrics are cut differently. Pattern companies take that into consideration. That's why they tell you to, that's why they have the arrows so that the drape of the fabric falls the right way. But that doesn't mean that sewing it is easy. So this is the worst right. way to sew it. This is the against the grain, with the grain doesn't stretch, against the grain does, on the bias has the most stretch. This is not stretch fabric. This is a crepe de chine chiffonish fabric. Do you know the name of this, Sharon? This fabric? Am I, I don't think I'm right. I don't think it's crepe de chine because I think that implies it's shiny. Can't remember. I think it is a crepe-ish. Oh, I, I never move the needle, right, Claire? <laughs> right? I'm really not trying to act crazy. <laughs> it just comes naturally. <laughs> Cord is beneath the foot or beneath the fabric, so I can't see it. And the foot takes over. This is a, an instance where we want to use a shorter stitch length. I have it always set to five, which you're more likely to get a gather than a sewing than a stitch. This is corded pin tucking. And here's where the, the fabric is see-through a little bit. So if you use complementary colors, sorry, by the way, for hitting the camera, bounce around. This is the benefit of the course is that I'll be pre-filming it, so you're not gonna. Then we'll go live together as well. Every session will have live sessions. So this is the backside. I can use invisible thread in the needle or in the bobbin and then you wouldn't see anything except for the cording inside of the fabric. You can also do that with beads and rhinestone and chain and cord. And Another thing that you can do is holding on to the cord, this hand. And this is the way that you can gather denim, corduroy, suede, any heavy fabric. You can also use it for this kind of fabric. You can see how it gathered. Oh. Adjustable. Then you can use the foot to sit over the cord, to sew it into a seam, and then cut the cord and pull it out. And so you're not oh. wasting the cord. I know. I just will keep making you go, oh. <laughs> There's a power. I have that power. It's so much fun. The power to make you go, oh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. This is me on a Saturday. See how pretty that is? And then you can also tuck it in and look at that. Now, it's this, now it's this really incredibly consistent gather right along the edge and you can use the foot to sew it in or onto something by just dropping it like that and the foot will guide you so that you'll your needle will be right along the edge of that so a uh, great way to do extra gather ruffles on cap sleeves and there's just so many uses for that I'm going to show you a pearl. I'm going to take pearls and do that just to scare the living daylights out of you because it's so much fun. So you could use that last technique for tutus, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tutu, I, I do tutu, a little bit of tutus too. Yeah, no, I mean, you could sew a tutu in like five seconds, but you don't even need the cording. Oh. Same foot. 
I'll show you, but uh, I still have the double needle on. So that's what's guiding me right now is I put a double needle on. Because I didn't have a good ruffler in this course, um, they did that technique where you, you held on to the thread and zigzagged over the thread and then pulled it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which sometimes it breaks. So. I, have, I have seven methods of gathering. Oh. And uh, you have access to all of that. I need to open that book. You do not think well, you Christmas. Access. I had Christmas and, you know, I made like all my gifts. So it's You're like. Excused. <laughs> And it's the belief that you have to learn it. That's the danger. That's where you don't, you may never start. Okay, so I'm gonna take this bobbin out. My nails used to be longer. To learn how to work without them. I feel like that bobbin was really tight. It's a lot of noise. Putting invisible thread in the bobbin. And if anyone's ever told you can't, well, you know they're not right because there's invisible thread. <laughs> and this is my, our, our nylon monofilament thread. You do not want to ever use polyester monofilament, which is what everyone else sells except for people that follow me, like uh, AppleQuick. She now has her own invisible thread and it's nylon. Well, she's had it for a few years now. By the way, we were out of some of the AppleQuick products. They're on their way. Oh, no, they're not, but they will be. <laughs> I thought they were on their way, and then she sent me an email saying, it's, it's a holiday week. We're not working this week. We'll ship Monday. So on Monday, it will ship. And we usually get it within a, within a week following that. I'm putting the threads in because I said I would show you this with a double needle, and then I'm going to take off the double needle. I'm much quicker for the not having to worry about breaking a needle on the throat plate. Talk. You still doing double thread? Why are you all so quiet at the same time? It's unnerving. It's like having a whole house full of kids, and all of a sudden they all go quiet, and you're like, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are they up you to now? Just wondering what I was doing. Yeah, okay. So I was just rethreading the needle because I accidentally pulled one of the threads out. You were rethreading the double the needles. Yeah. Oh, one of them. You you pulled one of the threads out. I pulled one of them out, and then I tried to thread the other one, and then it got tangled, which is why I tell you not to do that. So, and okay. I had to pull them both out. Oh my gosh, how funny is that? Mm -hmm. I just found the sample of what I'm about to do. So I'll okay. just see all these little rows here. Now those were all done using a zigzag stitch. Taking the pearls, put it beneath. I think this is from the six hour thingy. Or maybe from the shows, might have been from the shows. There is a row of beads under there, you guys. Can't see them. This is like one of the scariest things you'll ever do. Once you do this, you're ready to do anything that I ask you to do. This double needle is 3.0 and the beads are 2.5. It's a half a millimeter. Mm. <laughs> Am I building the tension? And yeah. I'm looking at the side of the foot and I just put my finger there, but better than your finger is the presser. Better for your body. Very light push and you're just keeping that foot up against the row that was previously, previously stitched. And in, the, in these other rows, I used metallic, which is a really cool effect, especially on something like ballroom dancing. Whereas most people struggle just to sew it at all, I like to use three different metallic threads, three different colors. When I do this, it creates this incredible hand woven appearance as if you took and hand sewed these beads into the fabric. So what you're seeing is the fabric is raised 
up above the surface right here. This fabric was this big and it shrunk. So this is a way of doing a dart to fit a garment tighter to the body without doing a dart. Hmm. Which I feel like if there was another costume designer in here, you'd be hearing a lot of, oh my gosh. <laughs> but uh, so basically, if you know what the purpose of a dart is, is to size and make things smaller without having to cut the pattern piece smaller. So it's usually done around a bodice, form around the bust line, and to keep a princess cut. So you can see here that the beads are in the fabric instead of, instead of up on top. All of these are embedded, and this is the metallic. See how pretty that is? Can you see it? Yeah, yeah that's pretty. <clears throat> is it because you guys aren't getting a good shot of this? Know that I oh, will. Amazing. I will post close-up photos inside of the group after, or inside, of, yeah, inside of the school. Under this, uh, that was that was a good shot. Yeah. 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 Still feel like this, like we're not getting. This is why I don't like live anymore. I just, I, I'm so tired of the cameras not being able to do as good a job as the other. But we'll still do lives like this because it's fun. All right, now I'm gonna take one needle out because we're gonna do sequins. But before I do that, I'm gonna, I'm going to. You're, you're gonna so, take the whole needle off because it's a double needle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Amy. And if you want to, if you want to use these to get a needle position, uh, cut a quarter inch down. Don't try to cut up against that plastic because it'll just break into pieces. And wear protective eyewear and use the wire cutters and you just cut and then you have one needle that's jetting off to the side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. As long as you have a zigzag opening and your machine is equipped for a needle to be over there, you can do that. And that is why we've never had anyone not be able to achieve all pipings. I'm going to hey. this a purple thread because most of the group loves purple. <laughs> <laughs> Pearls and piping foot again. And you want to sew a tutu. is the needle I took off. Oh yeah. There I put them when I have my pack stuck on my machine. Do I have some tutu fabric? Where's your tweezers so you can tighten that screw? Is that disturbing you? <laughs> yeah. You knew I didn't tighten it tight enough? Yes. Because you've told us that our fingers won't. Yeah, but Mark, I, I warn you when you're using a, a, a foot that goes over that. But I felt like I didn't tighten it enough. See? Yeah, I think you're, <laughs> you're in my head. It's very unnerving. <laughs> yeah. Really, Sometimes like it's unnerving <laughs> when I'm in my own head. <laughs> Oh, what a mess I just made. Shame on you. Next time Chase comes in here. Oh, my fault. It's the stuff I have in here grabs hold of things. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's kind of stiff. I don't know how well it will work. Let's see. Does it have stiffeners in it? So how long does it did it take you to, to form the tutu, Sharon? Oh, I went, I went to, um, cause I used to do ballet and, um, I, I've always wanted to really learn how to make a professional tutu. So I went to tutu.com and it was three days on the bodice and two days on the skirt. Now you can apply all the things you learned and then do my techniques instead. 
Yes. See, so you have the pattern from them and then use my techniques. Yes. So great stitch. So a few stitches forward, a few stitches back. Put your thread tension to nine and your length to five or the longest your machine will go. And then sew. Watching the front of the foot. They either make you happy or make you go, oh my gosh. Can you tell it's gathered? Yeah, looks pretty good. It's gathered to its full gather and it's adjustable. Yep. And that they were, we were using pieces that were 110, you know, the netting that's 110 inches. So we had all different size. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Ruffle. Same, same, same exact thing. It's just uh, however big your fabric is. That's irrelevant. This is actually harder to gather than the other. It's got some kind of stiffening agent on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This nice. Time, Thank you. This was tearing everything. What the heck is this thing? I bought it because it was cool. <laughs> but it's <laughs> terrible, man. It's like, it's got wire edges on the edging. I'm like, I can do something fun with that. Mm. It needs to be in a cage. And it comes in different colors, but it's destroying everything in that drawer because it's so pokey and stiff. So yeah, the white one's doing the same thing. All right, so would you like me to sew a sequin? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, of think course. Nice. Do you, you remember like asking for that, Amy? Or would you like I me? Do. Or would you like me to show you how to sew a couture method of gathering, where you sew two rows of stitches spaced apart and gather them both at the same time? Hmm. Okay. That Did you say yes or or get yes. on a sew on a sequin? Because it's this foot. No, it's interesting. I, I... I'm really just harassing you. I know you're not <laughs> used to be me being so good at smart smartasm. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> funny. So couture method of gathering. Why do I call it that? Not all gathers are created equal. Sometimes you need to have such precision that you must sew two rows of stitches. So for instance, if you have a garment, picture a bodice that goes like this, right at the waistline. And you want some fabrics, some sheer chiffon to curve up into those points and it all to be gathered. You cannot use a ruffler. So those people that showed you the ruffler, a ruffle and a gather are both ruffles. What's the difference between a ruffle and a gather? Mm -hmm. Adjustable. Who said that? Ryan. What? And me. Amy. Amy. Amy's Amy right. And one to gather. I need like a little bell. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> so a gather is adjustable, and you need a gather whenever you're going to form a straight piece of fabric that's gathered up, up into a curve. So a gathering foot will not work because the fabric is gathered and locked in position. On a gathering stitch, you have the ability to ease it like I did with that other stitch. However, sometimes you do not want your stitch, you want a more precise, you want two rows and I'll show you why. I'll show you, do you know why there's two rows? Stronger. Oh. Why do they have you sew two rows? Um, case one breaks. We got somebody new. 
Is it Tamara or Tamara? And know that you are muted or your microphone is not even on. Welcome. Right now we are nearing the end of this, <laughs> if, I, if I ever end it. And um, I'm showing a technique called couture, the couture method of gathering. It's a technique that I created a long time ago at the uh, Sewing and Stitchery Expo in Washington for a lady who was exasperated. She was like, they have you do these two rows of stitching and then they have you gather it up and one thread constantly breaks and you don't understand, you have to do it. And I'm like, I was like, I know, but I don't have a method for that. And she just kept getting so upset. So I went to my hotel room that night and went to sleep and I dreamt this technique. So I'm using a straight stitch, once again, longest stitch length that my machine will sew. And I sew a couple stitches forward and back. Very important that you do this. Taking the tension and dropping it all the way down to the bottom. If you're nervous to do this, stop being nervous, just do what I say. Tension of zero. So watching the side of the foot, keeping it in position and just go all the way down. That helps you the bottom. I guess Tamara wasn't interested. And, or she lost her connection. So then we pull this out. We want about, I'm just going by instinct because I can't even remember if I'm right, but eight inches of thread. I don't think, I can't remember if I need to do that or not. It's one of my other gathering techniques. Now we're going to take and place the foot next to the row that we already sewed. And sew a few stitches forward and back. Sorry, I'm getting a little winded. Take the tension all the way to the top for this second row of stitching. So we had zero on this row here, and now this second row is nine. And what you're going to do is grab hold of the bobbin thread, and I purposely choose two different colors of thread so you know which one is the bobbin. Don't make one light purple and medium purple. You know, complete contrasting colors so you don't have to question which thread you got. And then you're going to hold on to that thread straight in front of the foot and sew watching the side of the foot. Don't let go of that thread in your hand. Come on, baby. Catch, catch. Oh, my foot pressure is too low. Come on. Take it. Quit fighting it. There we go. I wasn't straight. I was off to the side. So make sure you're straight. What you see happening there is both rows gathering at the same time. See how pretty that is? Yeah. Hmm. And it's adjustable or easable. Get those needle threads aside and you always hold your bobbin thread when you ease. And you can ease this. The same thing is true, sewing a pillow and you wanna do a corner on a pillow. If you use a ruffler on a the corner of a pillow or on a, on a ruffle, it would be locked like this and you can't make it strong or stretch it out. Then when you go to turn a corner, see how the fabric flips? So in the insides, you need more gather than you do on the straights. And the only way you can achieve that is mathematically and really, really planning with a ruffler or use a gathering stitch. And then on that couture gown where you want these gathers to swoop up into the point and come back down like a scallopy shape, you sew between the two rows of stitches. And then afterward, you cut the needle threads and pull the bobbin threads out and you have no remaining stitches and all of these stitches are really really beautifully formed isn't that pretty how it looks there oh i, I remember yeah. that 
I remember why I went O before and now it's too late, so I'm not gonna tell you. Why? <laughs> because it's I'd have to put a double needle back on. Just need to go into the extensive course to get everything out of my head. Now I'm gonna use the sequins. Cool. I'm going to have to tune back in because I have an appointment, but it was so nice um, to nice meet to you meet. all. And you were all so welcoming. And thank you, Claire, for um, zeroing in on some of my needs today. My pleasure. Uh, appreciate it. But I, I'll, I'll, all get I'll, I'll get the sequin part when I I'll, 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 on the video. It. You have it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Yeah. Happy, yeah. Happy nice. New Year. See you next time. Happy yeah. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to put the sequins into the guide. Was it Amy that wanted this? Why did I think it was? Yeah. Yes, it was Amy. Because <laughs> right. I have sequins. Oh, yeah. I still don't know <laughs> what I'm going to sew them on, but I remember that. Well, so I'm working on that. Sequins are fun. Sequins make you go, ooh. Remember I said that in a minute? Yeah. These are pretty, aren't they? Because they're teeny mm -hmm. little, right, Tina? Right. <laughs> Tina's my teal sister. Mm -hmm. to find no, I'm, I'm no she's the purple. I'm the teal. Oh. <laughs> yep. No, but I am the one that commented that Mighty Networks changed their color to, to suit you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except for they have the worst artist ever, don't you think? Well, which of the other design is weird? It yeah. is a weird design. I yeah, agree. They have like an astronaut flying mixed with a bear and all these weird. I mean, it's it's kind of like um, Mailchimp has a very strange one too. Like they deliberately got a bad artist. I guess that way they never have to be good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Kind of like that when I say. As long as you're inconsistent consistently, then no one will know. Oh, there it is. I was like, I had to find the guide. Just... All right. You don't know that I did that. Now I'm going to take and try to put that in there. And you can see the threads are all out of sorts. And you can put a little bit of liquid based glue on that to keep them together. Okay. Or you can just cut it to the end just to get it in. And you want them to go into the guide like you were, it's a fish. So see how the scales overlap one another? Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out what, a fish, what? Uh, so if you put them in the other way, then yeah. it hit the door. So like if I try to pull these out, I'll yeah. go figure it's gonna work this time. Usually, <laughs> usually when you try to pull them back out, they get stuck. Yeah. And this is a six millimeter sequin, which requires a seven millimeter wide zigzag. Okay. It's partly why I carry the machine I carry for anyone who doesn't, you know, have a machine that they want. <laughs> That's not what I meant to say. <laughs> if they don't have a machine that is capable of doing one of the techniques. The machine, the Eversewn machine that's on our site is an affordable priced machine that has all the features to do everything that I do. In case you ever need a new machine here, Chase, I'm sorry, I made a mess. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. There's your spot back again. There you go. There you go. Nice to have you in here. There you go. really does not like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch, seven millimeters wide. And I have this terrible purple thread <laughs> that, that is going to show up so much on here. Yeah, but that way we'll be able to see what it does. And as I sew, I have my stitch length set at four, and that is for this machine. 
So you can try, I'm actually hitting sequence. I'm hitting it here, so I move it here. But you can't move your zigzag stitch over either. So I'm trying to balance it so that I'm not striking through the sequin. Okay. That's in the manage not to. It's gone. The pressure's too tight. It's moving it over. Why is it moving it over? It's probably because I'm sitting cockeyed again. You just want to center yourself with your needle. Don't hold the sequins. <gasps> I was like holding the sequins. Oh my gosh. Else is causing this. I'm not supposed to hit it. Come on. Oh, this is this is. Oh yeah. All right. So only time I ever have you hold the sequins <laughs> is when you're sewing them on the edge of a piece of fabric. <laughs> okay. It's been a long time since I did this. So you just kind of pull it to the side like this. See the difference? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, noticed, I mean, I'm actually making it harder, it would seem, wouldn't it, to do this, but it makes it easier. So it stops them from having a party underneath the needle area. Yeah, I don't want my sequins having a party. Dorothy is neat. <laughs> <laughs> you want the sequins to go to the party, right? That's right. <laughs> So this is what it looks like when you don't do it right and you see I hit the I kept hitting the sequin but notice my needle didn't break and then you can see the thread right Dorothy was in and then she was out a lot of people having trouble today I was gonna say hi but she never made it all the way in maybe she's she did. I think they're probably scared too because they don't want to show their faces I don't know so See those sequins or see the stitches? Yeah. I'm staying in the same spot. Wiggle them out. See the sequins or see the stitches now? Nope. Nope. So it doesn't matter what color thread you use. Unless you hit them. Oh, she's back. This is her first time. Hi, Dorothy. You're muted until you unmute yourself. Welcome. I know that you popped in and popped out. And uh, it'll get easier. The internet has a lot to do with it. So depending on your area. And you don't, it doesn't appear that you have a microphone and your camera is off, but you're still welcome to hang out. So everyone say hi to Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. See how pretty that looks? And it's a zigzag stitch, so it does finish the edge of the fabric. So you don't need to do anything. You put sequins on the edge of any type of fabric. Nice. Wedding bales or anything. And you can also have fun stitching them on top of fabric. But remember that a sequin is attached to something. Each one of these sequins is attached to what? Well, the thread behind it. Yeah, and they're not stretchy threads. Right? Okay, mommy's getting something out of this drawer. You can stay there. Oh, oh you don't have to go. Don't go. <laughs> because our things fall down. You you drop stuff. I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to like dropping things on me. I'm leaving. Come here, Chase. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. I'm all done. This is it. That's what I was saying. Okay. I worked with a company called, what is it called? Meadowbrook Inventions and helped her develop a stretchable sequin for hmm. ice skating, manufacturing. So this is the only one that stretches. Hmm. And it's built over lingerie thread. Ah. Huh. So that it can stretch and withstand that. But it only the only way you can use this type of sequin is if you miss it. Because if your needle strikes it, then it locks that sequin in its place. 
So once again, I'm on a seven millimeter wide zigzag. My stitch length is 4.0. I can tell that my needle is way far from where it should be for sewing sequins on top of the fabric. And you never have to hold the sequins, nor should you, except for <laughs> when you sew them on the edge. So in the okay. middle, your hands are free to do whatever you want. But remember that that's not a stretchy stitch. So how you can adapt sequins onto something that's not stretchy is by sewing them in a swirling design, giving them more mobility, making it look harder. And of course, here I am again sewing it on Minky, one of the hardest fabrics, but the sequins and ribbon foot is divine. It doesn't stretch things out of shape. It lets you do things you shouldn't be able to do. Oh, see, I was going to do elastic too. At the end of a row of stitching, you cut. Oh, don't let her see me use her scissors. Wrong way. <laughs> Apple quick. <laughs> Rosa would go, what are you doing cutting those? She would not be happy about that. I only cut, even though they're my scissors, they're her product. So you see how I left it really long here, but I would also mm -hmm. tie a knot of, of the threads. Cut your, let, let your, let your, all of a sudden some words popped into my head. Let something happen. I don't know, some speech from something popped into my head. It's a Saturday. So it is. Cut. So we leave our threads long because we're going to tie our threads to the thread that this is connected to and pull off your sequence. And it's, it's like, it's, it's one of the most arduous parts of this process, right? Especially if you do it like this. So if you take a needle, flip it over. There's two threads that cross over the sequin. And so if you get it underneath, you can just hold on to the big thread. Okay, look, it's been a while. Oh, where are you? There's one thread that's thicker than the rest. And that's the one you hold on to. And then you just start going under like that and it pulls off the little small threads unwrap. Uh, your sequins won't go flying all over the place. You'll end up with a bunch of sequins on a string. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. It's very awkward right now. I don't know why. Oh, flip it upside down. Maybe that'll be better. Holy moly. These are the little things that people edit out. So hold the big thread and then you can just boink, boink. That's it only takes a few seconds when you get the hang of it. You don't have a bunch of equipment in front of your face and you're wearing your glasses. Which you haven't <laughs> asked me where they were all day and I haven't had them on. So makes sense. Then you're, then, yeah. then you tie your thread from your sewing machine to these threads and have it be on the bottom of the fabric. And all you'll see is sequins on the top. I haven't done the, the little wiggle. So you just wiggle. All the stitches fall beneath the sequins. So nobody can tell how you sewed it on. Wow. This foot has not had near the coverage that it deserves. I'm having this one of the things I need to film. See how cool that looks. And it's it's got some stretch to it because of the non- straight stitch that we did. Oh, elastic was a, you wanted elastic. I don't know. I didn't want elastic. Who Somebody wanted said, elastic? No. Somebody said it. I just said it, it sews elastic really well. But. All right, then, then you guys want me to end? Well, we <laughs> want you to end, but you know. My, is, uh, kind of, sort of, but not really. This my my phone's almost my phone battery's almost dead. I'm gonna switch the. That'll be my next thing. <laughs> <laughs> Where is 
my mouse. What's on that screen? Here we go. We should have a button on the outside instead of having to click in there to switch. Stop complaining. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If you find a video on my YouTube channel with this purse, it's pretty much all the sequins and ribbon foot. So it'll uh, sequin and ribbon and satin match foot. And okay. it will uh, inspire you to use that foot more. It's, it's, it's a really fun foot to use. And then of course it also couches with yarn so you can stitch all around. I found something the other day. I forgot where I put it. <laughs> where I created it with the sequins and ribbon foot and uh, and then of course you can combine the sequins and ribbon foot with the octi hoops and really go for it. Wow. Now I, I found the little thingies that make you go around in a circle by the way so um, anyone who orders anything if you ordered today or during this sale that we got going on right now if your order is in and it hasn't shipped I'll throw one in to anyone, that's, to anyone that's in here, they're a little, a little thingy that you stick on top of the tack. Uh, so hmm. it's, it's too cheap to price. <laughs> so I just want to throw it in there and you can have one. And then I'll, I'm going to film the going around in circles thing better and uh, maybe come up with some type of a kit where it's included with the tack or whatever. For doing circles because remember yeah. i failed a little bit at that I, I succeeded but then i failed because i didn't have the right stuff so having the right stuff matters any it other does. questions while you have me on this saturday when will we see you again <laughs> <laughs> i know that you want me commit but remember i did just find out i have to move so um if my brain continues to function normally, I have plans to upload videos on Thursdays and uh, do them as premieres, which allows you guys to chat while we all watch together. So it's very similar to me being live, except for I'm not live. I'm in the chat with you. Okay. So when you type something, I, I can type right back because I'm in the chat, even though I'm on the screen. So it'll, okay. So they'll, okay. they'll premiere on Thursdays at two, just like the show it'll used be, to be. Happening. It'll be the show, Fabrically Speaking. Okay. But it it's won't totally... be it won't be Fabrically Speaking live. Right. Okay. Because I love the name of the show, and that's partly why I hung on as long as I did. But you know how I switch cameras when we're live, mm -hmm. and it's much more fluid than it is in here in Zoom, where I'm trying to figure out you know how to change cameras. So. Um, I'm trying, before I move, I plan to film a lot of different things so that during the move, you won't know I'm moving because the, okay. the content will keep going up. And, and my goal is to have a, a show every Thursday at some point, but I hate to promise anything until the Creative Feed Extensive is done. So that's where I'm at. And you can always reach out. You don't have to sound pathetic. Oh, we miss you. You can just say... <laughs> <laughs> when are you gonna go live next or when are you gonna do this live? I am it is January, it is my birthday next next week. So happy uh, birthday. Thank you. And i mine was to, yesterday. Well, I said happy oh birthday. happy birthday, Wendy. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I'm gonna take me out the spotlight and uh, you guys can chat for the remainder. And actually I'm just gonna kinda we won't we don't need to record the rest, so I'm gonna end this and stop recording and we can chat for a few minutes afterward. If you have yet to join in for one of the all member chats at createwithclairerowley.com, be sure to join the school, it's free. And then come on in for a Zoom chat with us. You don't even have to put yourself on the screen if you don't feel secure or have the ability or understand how to do it. And we'll still welcome you. And uh, everybody's really nice. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> They can be a little sassy, but you're very welcome here. It doesn't matter what machine you have and what your experience level is. You're welcome with all of us and, and uh, welcome to the Creative Feet family. And I'm going to end this now. So bye. And uh, I will, all I'm doing to do is stop recording you guys. So the session will still be going on.
So my brain has to go, are you sure? How do we do that? How do we do that? <laughs> That's easy. Just stop recording. All right. So see you in the next live. And if you're in the live right now, you don't have to go anywhere. You can ask me some more questions and you'll all be on the screen. So, and it won't be recorded. So I think I made myself make sense. <laughs>